this is this is sort of the last week for that additional six hundred dollars a week for um, unemployment. I think they're saying that they're gonna. Well, well now they're saying that the unemployment is going to continue, but I think it's going down to two hundred. Is what I read. Um, I might be wrong about that figure. I'm not sure. Uh, so don't quote me, but but I believe it's two hundred. I could be wrong. Uh, but essentially, the the argument from neoliberals, from conservatives from the people that are, you know, against notions like UBI, against notions of um, any any sort of like, quote unquote, welfare program, anything to really just financially help the people, right? And not bail out markets and not bail out capitalism. Uh, they always come out and say, well, if we give people money, it de-incentivizes uh, de um, them to work. Sorry, I lost the word there for a second. It de-incentivizes them to work. Right, that if you if if somebody loses their job, and you give them unemployment, or they go on welfare, or they go on some kind of financial assistance from the government, or you know what have you, it's going to de uh, incentivize them from working. They're they're just not going to want to work. And the studies, a Yale study, actually found out that that is just not true. That's just not what's going on. Um, and even the Fed has come out and, and said that that is actually not true. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the people that received that extra $600 a week were, were ready to go back to work. <sighs> because people want to have meaning. They want to have purpose in what's going on, in what they're doing. They don't want to do you know, the menial tasks uh, it's part of the reason why you have a lot of people in my generation that don't want to work in factories, that don't want to work these industrial jobs, because that's not what gives them meaning. That's not to say that you know nobody wants to be a janitor or something like that. I think there are some people that enjoy cleaning. There are some people that enjoy doing some of the grunt work. There are people that like working with their hands, mechanics, you know, HVAC. Um, uh, uh, techs, I guess is what they would be called, engineers, uh, you know, uh, people that work in sanitation. Like, there's a lot of people that are like, they find purpose in that. They find purpose in, um, in being in those industries. But, you know, with automation coming, that, that does mean that we have to find some deeper meaning in our work that goes beyond just making a paycheck and paying our bills. Um, and that's that's kind of what this idea has started to 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 bring up, especially the fact that like, yeah, the people were receiving money, but they wanted to still work. Like they didn't want to just sit around and do nothing. So you know, it's either figuring out how to take that extra six hundred dollars a week that they were getting and finding out how much of that they um, needed for bills and to pay all their things, and then to find out, okay, what do we do with this extra? Do I give it to a cause? Do I reinvest it into something exciting that I wanted to do, something that I've always wanted to start? Uh, and this study basically finds that they, they were still looking for work. Now, uh, Larry Kudlow, let me figure out who Larry Kudlow exactly is because I forget. Uh, he's the economic advisor for the White House, Larry Kudlow. He, uh, he said that we're paying people not to work. That's what Larry Kudlow claims. We're paying people not to work. Well, maybe. I, I, this might be a little too revolutionary of, uh, of an idea I'm throwing out here, but maybe uh, we should fucking pay people to work. Maybe we should pay people a livable wage. Maybe their wage should go up based on the inflation in the country. Maybe you should allow small businesses to thrive instead of giving tax breaks to companies like Amazon and Walmart to squash small businesses out, to basically make the market in their favor. You know, maybe you should let small businesses be able to pay their employees a little bit more by making it a little bit easier to be a small business in America. Maybe you should let workers join unions and treat them fairly. Maybe maybe we should we should have that. Maybe we should have more meaningful jobs in America. Just maybe, Larry. Maybe. Instead of treating workers like dog shit, and uh, 
you know, like they're just grunts to make Jeff Bezos a fucking trillionaire. You could give, you could help them out and pay them what they're worth. See what that does. Maybe there'll be less civil unrest in the streets if people are just treated properly. Even the Chicago Fed, the Chicago Federal Reserve came out and said, yeah, the people that received the unemployment benefits were still looking for jobs. Uh, uh, more of them were looking for jobs than the ones that didn't. And the ones that didn't, I'm not saying are lazy, by the way. I'm, there, there's a lot of mitigating factors, especially when you spend so much time looking for a job. Global pandemic hits. You try to get unemployment. And then you fall through the cracks of the system. And you get defeated. I've been there. It sucks. It, like, you fall into a depressive hole. You don't want to do anything. You know? I've been there. I've, I've, I've sat around and just watched Netflix for hours on end. Didn't really want to fucking do anything. And a week or two goes by. Then you get, and then I got my fucking shit together. Because, well, for... <laughs> I think my anxiety kind of overdrives my depression uh, and then thoughts get stuck up here and if they don't come out I get more like anxious and annoyed and you know so it's, it, there's just like shit buzzing in my head all the time uh, so that kind of gears me to go <laughs> uh, and start doing shit um, a lot more but I've definitely been there I've definitely been completely defeated you know over certain things even in the, in the even in the world of comedy it's like I've I've I vie for a gig for so hard or I'm trying to like get this tour to come together and you know it's like I, it, 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 the, the tour is let's say three weeks it's like a three week planned tour and it doesn't come together the way that I want I get maybe 10 out of the 21 dates and then I kind of feel shitty about it and I don't do anything about it for like two days I, it's depressing and it's it burns you out I get it. And that's probably what those folks might have been going through. It doesn't mean that they're lazy. It just means that, like, yeah, things are shitty. And that's whenever, instead of attacking those people and, you know, pretending like you're holier than thou because you have a job or, you know, you have better circumstances than they do, maybe fucking lend them a hand, you know? Especially if this is a Christian nation, maybe you should do the Christian thing and actually be kind and take care of the people in your country. That's another thing, right? I, you know, is, is the Republican Party claims to be this Christian party, claim to be, you know, uh, the, that America is a Christian nation. Yet yeah, we don't do any, I mean, America doesn't do shit that matches being a Christian. How many homeless people do, do, do churches take in? I mean, you could turn a church into a homeless shelter immediately. Like, right now, especially during a pandemic, get a cleaning crew, sanitize the church, get beds and stuff six feet apart, and help people stay there. Some of these churches are fucking massive. And instead, they'll get tax breaks to be closed and not do a fucking thing. How many Republicans are out there making legislation to help homeless people right now to help people that are going to get evicted out of their homes you know what they don't you know what they do say it's their fault that they're getting kicked out of their homes they didn't work hard enough and they didn't try hard enough it's like we're in a fucking pandemic where are these jobs going to come from mitch mcconnell say, is standing up there with this new fucking stimulus bill trying to get americans back to work for what that's what this pandemic has shown us. What are we working for? What are some of these jobs here for? Do you really need to, 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 to get your fucking, you know, goddamn planes, trains, and automobiles DVD fucking in your, ha in your hands in, in a day with Amazon? No, you don't. You know how that shit happens? By overworked workers, exhausted in a goddamn warehouse, 
not getting paid enough money. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos is making a trillion dollars. That's not the Christian thing to do. This, I, this, this instance, especially right here, I think has uh, brought up the question of meaningful work. Brought up the question that people were getting paid. Literally, like one of the things that, that was happening with the $600 additional is that people were making way more fucking money with that unemployment than they were when they were fucking employed. Right. So when the Republicans found that, they were like, oh, my God, people are never going to go back to work again. And the question is, why would they? And two, you saw that people were still looking for work, which means that this is more about meaning and purpose than it is about getting rich and scamming the system for most of us. And instead of finding a way to provide new, more meaningful work, you're going to put them in more dangerous conditions. Back to the warehouses. Back to the meat packing plants. Back to being frontline workers. With a bunch of assholes, they're going to scream at them about wearing masks in the stores. They're going to cough on them and spit on them and attack them. That's not meaningful work. You could automate a bunch of, I mean, and that's coming. That's on its way. And once that happens, what's next? This new stimulus bill that's coming up, right, is um, another $1,200. Uh, yeah, this is another $1,200 that's coming directly to Americans. Um, is, is a bit of a joke, just like the last one was. Do I think people could use it? Oh, absolutely. Could I use an extra twelve hundred dollars? Oh, you you bet your ass I could. I would. There are quite a few bills I would be able to either, um, you know, really take care of, or just significantly reduce. That is not going to help me in the long run. It would be nice for the month of August and maybe into the month of September. But in the long run. Oh, goodness, no. They're extending some unemployment stuff. It... Here's a quote by Steny Hoyer. They said, look, it's not $600 or bust. Uh, Pelosi said the other day, which I thought was a great line, we don't have red lines, we have values. We're going into these negotiations with values. Okay. What values? Yeah, that, that's not really particularly defined. We don't have red lines, but values? What are your values? Nancy Pelosi has come out and declined a universal basic income because the Republicans might be mean, which is, which, which, there was such major pushback from everybody within the Democratic Party towards Pramila Jayapal for bringing that up when the HEROES Act was being written back in May or June that she doesn't want to fucking do anything anymore. She, she was one of, one of like the leading people within the Democratic Party that might have been on our side. And she don't want to do nothing anymore because the party beat it out of her for something that every fucking modernized country is doing right now. Pelosi doesn't want to do Medicare for all, but she wants to increase COBRA at a point where there's a pandemic going on. You want to get people to pay more, and then people wonder why I'm not a fucking Democrat. And they just came out and said that the DNC's platform is not for Medicare for all. They don't really want to defund the police. Joe Biden's plan is to shoot people in the leg. At what's fucking Nancy Pelosi's plan? To read the names of all the people that have been murdered by the cops? And then what? We banned chokeholds. Why was that not banned in the first place? Why was that allowed in the fucking first place? 
there's no i mean the small business buffers same thing they, they're doing some ppe shit which which would then kick these people off unemployment they have more small business loans and are we going to see the same shit again that we saw back in april where a bunch of corporations are going to take uh, advantage of that shit Where's the provision put into place that corporations can't do that for small business loans? And no one, no one, in, no one in Congress wants to talk about that. But they will talk about how unemployment might de-incentivize people to work when that's not true. It's a fucking propagandized line. I mean, I, th and this argument has been made for every, from, uh, for, uh, forever by people that are pro UBI. I've come out and said it many times in various fucking videos, and every time there's always these fucking these these neoliberals that think they're smarter than everybody, and these conservatives that are you know very like we got to it's a Christian nation of people got to work. All fucking come out and say, well, if you give people money, they will not want to work. They're all fucking lazy and they won't want to work because human beings are awful and we're terrible creatures and we'll never go to work. It's a crock of shit. It's a crock of shit. If you give people $2,000 a month instead of another $7 trillion to the banks... If you do that for the next six months, it's the same amount of fucking money. Um, and you would help out the people. You would have less homelessness in America. You would probably have less crime due to that. Uh, because, because being homeless is a crime in America. You would have less, probably less civil unrest in the streets. You can sit there and say, well, where would you get the money? Decrease the military budget, decrease the police budgets. There's two points right there. Offer people Medicare for all. Make sure that they're taken care of. Give hospitals what they need. This is not the time for the for war. The entire world is called a, a, a peace treaty and, and an armistice, and you're still ready to fucking blow some shit up. And the, ridiculous. And then people sit there and wonder, well, Chris, why aren't you a fucking Democrat? Are you not paying attention? It's wild. It's wild. But, this, but I mean, you saw the Fed. The Fed even came out and was just like, yeah, people want to work even when they're on unemployment. It kind of means that people, there's like more meaning about this stuff. And maybe, we, maybe when there isn't meaningful work to be had, we should help people out financially so, they're, so that they can use that capital to find meaningful work. But that's not the direction they're going to go. And then people wonder, well, Chris, why aren't you a fucking Democrat? Well, the Democrats don't want you to have meaningful work either, just like the Republicans do. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Please share it around with a friend or an enemy or whoever you think would enjoy uh, a video like this. Uh, to, to share it out, uh, YouTube and Facebook usually suppress content like this. They don't usually show content like this to, to a lot of people. So I very much depend on you guys, the viewers and the fans of the show, to get the word out. Um, and make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you're getting notifications about this video. Uh, I have a bunch of different ways that you can financially support this show. One is by just making a one-time donation. You can just make a one-time donation and say, Hey, that was a fucking great video, and I want to support it financially. Here's X amount of whatevers. Uh, another way is by becoming a sustaining member. Sustaining membership gets you free tickets to shows, uh, unreleased stand-up comedy content and storytelling content, and early access to a full uh, holistic episodes of Fork Full of Noodles uh, that you get weeks in advance. Weeks in advance, you guys. Uh, and another way to help is by coming to a live show. I've got a bunch of live stand-up comedy performances coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Fringe Festival in Providence, Rhode Island, the, Pro uh, the Fringe PVD. All of these are virtual festivals, by the way. Uh, July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. If you want to be part of the virtual live audience, let me know. Send me a message, leave a comment, uh, email me, uh, and I'll send you the donation link 
and I'll make sure that you're on the list to be a part of the live virtual audience. It's July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. And then we're on to doing more of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Each week, brand new content, brand new material, and a brand new subject matter, and I donate half the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. Uh, the next one is August 7th, and then on August 14th and August 28th, and then we'll be moving right into the fall. So keep up with these dates. You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for uh, continuing to come back to support this channel. Until the next one, we'll see you on the road.